hello friends warm welcome in this video that is the enzyme specificity and active sites friend in nature there will be nothing more specific than the enzyme a characteristic feature of enzyme is that they are very specific in their action the specificities are of various types that may be group specificity that may be a absolute specificity or that may be a stereochemical specificity so we will learn each of these with some specific examples so first group specificity some enzymes exhibit group specificity that is they may act on several different though closely related substrates to catalyze a reaction involving a particular chemical group an example of this kind of enzyme is alcohol dehydrogenase or hexokinase alcohol dehydrogenase is an enzyme which catalyzes the oxidation of variety of alcohols. In this reaction of alcohol dehydrogenase, ethanol is oxidized to acetaldehyde. Same enzyme can act on a methanol and can convert that into formaldehyde. It means that this enzyme is specific for hydroxyl group and not for the particular substrate. So such type of specificity is often known as group specificity. We will see the another example of a group specificity that is hexokinase. Hexokinases assist transfer of phosphate from ATP to several different hexose sugars. In this example, the glucose is converted into glucose 6-phosphate in the presence of hexokinase. The other hexose sugars may convert into respective 6-phosphates by the action of hexokinase. That means if here is a galactose then it will may convert into galactose 6-phosphate or if here is a fructose it may convert into the fructose 6-phosphate. It means that the specificity is not for the substrate glucose but the specificity is for the hexose sugars. The another type of specificity is absolute specificity. Such type of enzymes will act only on one particular substrate. For example, glucokinase. Glucokinase catalyzes the transfer of phosphate from ATP to glucose and to no other sugar. Although the specificity of the glucokinase in liver is less clear cut in contrast to the true glucokinase of bacteria and invertebrates. So here only glucose is converted into glucose 6-phosphate in the presence of glucokinase. Glucokinase can't convert other exosugars sugars to their respective 6-phosphates. So such specificity are known as absolute specificity. Uncatalyzed reactions often give rise to a wide range of products, but enzyme catalyzed reactions are product specific as well as being substrate specific. The other type of specificity is stereochemical specificity. In addition to showing chemical specificity, enzyme exhibits stereochemical specificity. That means if a substrate can exist in two stereochemical forms, that is D and L form, chemically identical but with different arrangement of atoms in a three-dimensional space, then only one of the isomers will undergo a reaction as a result of catalysis by a particular enzyme. Such type of enzymes are called as stereochemical specific enzymes. For example, D and L amino acid oxidase. L amino acid mediates the oxidation of L amino acids to oxo acids. A separate enzyme D amino acid oxidase is required for the corresponding oxidation of D amino acid. L amino oxidase mediates the oxidation of L amino acids to oxo acids or alpha keto acids and a separate enzyme D amino acid oxidase is required for the corresponding oxidation of D amino acids. Even greater specificity is shown by the fungal enzyme glucose oxidase which catalyzes the reaction beta D glucose to beta D glucose plus O2 which will give D glucano 15 lactone plus H2O2. No other naturally occurring sugar including alpha D glucose and beta D galactose can be acted upon to any appreciable extent. The only enzymes which act on both stereoisomeric forms of a substrate are those whose function is to interconvert L and D isomers. An example is alanine racemase, which catalyzes the reaction L alanine to D alanine. The enzyme catalyzed reactions may yield stereospecific products even when 
the substrate possesses no asymmetric carbon atom. For example, the action of glycerol kinase on glycerol always results in the production of L glycerol 3 phosphate and there will be no formation of L glycerol 1 phosphate. Even though the two CH2H groups of glycerol are chemically identical. The specificity of enzyme action is determined by, by two separate factors. One, the relative ability of potential substrate to bind to the enzyme and once bound, its relative ability to undergo reaction to form products. Only the overall rate of product formation indicate whether the enzyme can utilize a particular potential substrate. There are several hypotheses which accounts for the specificity of enzymes like lock and key hypothesis, indispute hypothesis or strain stabilization hypothesis. But no single one of the hypothesis is able to account for the features of catalysis and specificity observed in all enzyme catalyzed reactions. Moreover, in some cases at least contribution from more than one of the factors appears to be present. So the specificity of enzyme is due to the presence of a specific active site. So now we will see what is active site. In order to explain the stereochemical specificity of enzymes, Alexander Oxton in 1948 pointed out that there must be at least three different points of interaction between enzyme and substrate. These interactions can have either a binding or a catalytic function. Binding sites link to specific groups in the substrate, ensuring that the enzymes and substrate molecules are held in a fixed orientation or in fixed position with respect to each other with the reacting group or groups in the vicinity of catalytic site. And the catalytic site is the actual site where the reaction takes place. For example, here site A double dash and A triple dash might represent binding sites for R double dash and R triple dash respectively. And A dash catalytic site for a reaction involving R dash. Thus, even if R dash and R double dash are chemically identical in the as with glycerol in the glycerol kinase reaction mentioned earlier, the asymmetry of the enzyme substrate complex means that only R dash can react providing binding site A triple dash is specific for R triple dash. R triple dash R double dash can never undergo reaction under these conditions since it is not bound into the vicinity of site A dash even when R dash binds to site A double dash. Generally similar considerations apply to enzymes catalyzing reactions involving more than one substrate. In this case the reacting groups of each substrate are bound together in the vicinity of one or more catalytic sites. So the active sites have some specific features. The region which contains the binding and catalytic site is often termed as an active site or active center of the enzyme. This region comprises only a small proportion of the total volume of the enzymes and is usually at or near the surface since it must be accessible to substrate molecules. In some, in some cases, X-ray diffraction studies have revealed a clearly defined pocket or cleft in the enzyme molecules into which the whole or part of each substrate can fit. Although the active site is given a planar representation, it should be realized that it has in fact a three-dimensional structure since it consists of portions of polypeptide chain. The amino acid residues involved may be widely separated in the primary structure being bound together in space because of the twists and turns within the molecules. The binding and catalytic sites must be either amino acid residues or cofactors, the latter being themselves bound to amino acid side chains. Substrate binding may involve a variety of linkages, but the bonds formed are usually relatively weak that is non-covalent. Those amino acid residues in the active site which do not have a binding or catalytic function may nevertheless contribute to the specificity of enzymes. Their side chains must be of a suitable size, shape and character not to interfere with the binding of the substrate, but they might interfere with the binding of 
other chemically similar substances. The active site often includes both polar and non-polar amino acid residues, creating an arrangement of hydrophilic and hydrophobic microenvironments not found elsewhere on an enzyme molecules. Hence, the function of enzyme may depend not only on the special arrangement of binding and catalytic site, but it depends also on the environment in which these sites occurs. Thus, it can be seen that the three-point interactions theory provides only a limited explanation of enzyme specificity, a more complete view coming from the considerations of a whole range of interactions in three-dimensional space. In next video, we will learn the various hypotheses which explains the enzyme specificity. Thank you.